Welcome again officially to everyone. Uh, really excited to have you here for this workshop. And uh, I'm just going to introduce our presenters and pass the mic to them so we can start with the evening. Uh, super excited to be joined today first by David Solnit, who I think a lot of us are either familiar with or have definitely seen his artwork all throughout the Bay Area at various demonstrations and, and protests and things like that. Um, David is an East Bay artist and arts organizer centering the arts. Um, oh, sorry. Centering the arts to build movements, nurture mass participation, and to help change the narratives. He has co led the Climate Justice Mural Project, facilitating large scale multi block street mural actions together with Idol No More SF Bay and the Society of Fearless Grandmothers in 2018 and 2019. He's currently using the arts to support the Poor People's Campaign and Keep Families Housed uh, anti-eviction campaign. And we will also be joined by Nancy Pili Hernandez, who is a San Francisco artist, educator, activist, and a member of the Trust Your Struggle, an artist collective of visual artists, educators, and cultural workers dedicated to social justice environmental sustainability and community activism through the medium of art. TYS is a crew, fam, and folks that are getting down for the people through graphics design, printmaking, photography, illustration, graffiti, multimedia installations, mural painting, and more. Um, and we're also super excited to be joined by two uh, wonderful musicians, singers from the Thrive Choir. Uh, many of us who are at least in the East Bay are familiar with the work of Thrive and the Thrive Choir and have done really amazing work in bringing music back into protest movements and things like that. So super excited to have them as well. Um, and with that, I will hand the mic to David, who will get us started for the evening. <coughs> Thanks, Kazu. And uh, welcome to everybody. Thanks so much for uh, taking your Wednesday evening and hanging out together. Um, Nancy and I are going to uh, do some show and tell for about 45 minutes. And then uh, the second half, we're actually going to make art together and uh, encouraging people who maybe aren't planning on it to actually stick with us and do that. And we also have a treat in that we have uh, Joyous and Jesse from Thrive who are going to uh, lead us or sing some songs, which I, I think we may be invited to probably on mute sing along with. Um, yeah. And uh, I think I'll, sh I'll do a little show and tell first and, uh, and then Nancy will, will jump in with who I'm very honored and excited. I've gotten to collaborate with her a little bit, mostly on street murals and was excited to get approached by uh, East Point Peace Academy who are doing some deep thinking and organizing about uh, what do we do if there's a coup in our country and how do we, uh, how do we uh, resist and organize and be smart and stop it? And, you know, as a step towards deeper transformation, liberation. And so just uh, chatting with, with Kazu and Chris, uh, I was like, well, let's, you know, just in the last handful of years, I've seen how the arts and particularly street murals have played a role in some of our shutdowns and, uh, and protests. And just imagining it's like, how can we weave art into uh, potential coup resistance to prevent a, a coup? And especially when it's so critical, you know, people who have studied successful coup resistance around the world say, one thing that's key is mass participation. So I'm just gonna share a little bit, uh, some slides, tell you a little bit about my journey, hopefully visually overstimulate you. And then we'll pass on to Nancy, see if we have uh, a little time for questions. I'd like to invite people, uh, if they want to introduce themselves in the chat and just type your name and what your relationship to uh, the arts is. If you sing, play music, craft, cook, garden, uh, just so we can a little bit get to know each other there. And I'm going to share my screen right here. And let's make it big. And that visually working, Kazu? Yep, we see it. 
So uh, in the mid and late 90s, I was part of a collective called Art and Revolution. And this was uh, our, our stencil logo that we used with a quote from Bertolt Brecht that art is not a mirror to reflect reality, but a hammer with which to shape it. And uh, we were a bunch of young activists trying to figure out how to use art as part of social movements and did a lot of experimenting with a lot of the movements that fed into the global justice movement, uh, anti-sweatshop students, forest protection, environmental justice, uh, a lot of the stuff that was going on in the mid and late 90s. And a lot of that wove into what became the global justice movements. And, uh, and we were part of a network of uh, young radical and anti-authoritarian street theater collectives up and down the West Coast called also called Art and Revolution. Uh, and when we found out the World Trade Organization was coming to Seattle, uh, we said, okay, this is a, a chance to take what we've learned about using the arts and put it together. And just uh, the, the WTO was an attempt by the world's 1% to grab power. This is a part of a Contestoria image. But the thing I, I would say about the shutdown of the World Trade Organization in Seattle is that at the core of it, we used arts organizing in the organizing uh, involving the community in Seattle, educating people about what the WTO was using, street theater and songs and arts, and then in the streets itself, and that uh, we use art really widely in the streets. So this is sort of what we look like. Uh, juxtaposed with the uh, the police who also used uh, theatrical theatrically dressed themselves up as sort of Darth Vader's with tear gas and projectiles. So it was a, a powerful experience and I like to to brag that had uh, a bunch of all volunteer scrappy artists not put what we learned about arts organizing at the center I don't I'm not sure that we would have shut down the WTO and that just the very simple ways of using the arts uh, had a big impact, organized people, and then did something that I'm hoping that we can do if we need to in the coming months, which is uh, because we did a good job of laying the foundation and art was part of it, it transformed from being a, a resistance of the few thousand of us who were organized into affinity groups and ready to blockade and lock down into a public uprising where the people of Seattle who had no organizational connection to us felt invited and joined us and I think the the art the music and uh the the juxtaposition between the Darth Vader's and what we looked like was a huge part of that uh after the Seattle WTO protests uh, a group of farm workers in Florida invited me to come and make art with them and that's been one of my main mentors in the last 20 years the coalition of immokalee workers who pick uh, a lot of the tomatoes and other uh, food in the United States and South Florida. And they were probably about the worst treated workers in the United States, uh, really uh, way below uh, livable wages, uh, horrible conditions and frequent uh, cases of modern day slavery. And through uh, watching them do 20 years of organizing and through, I, I think they're the smartest organizer in North America, but you know, drawing on their, their traditions in Haiti, Mexico, Guatemala, they put art and culture at the center of their organizing. And so uh, I think my, my role there was showing them ways you could make stuff out of cardboard boxes, but just getting to follow them and watch their, uh, their progress to where they're, they're now have a lot more dignity and a lot more control over their workplace situation than most of us in the United States through 20 years of struggle centering art culture and brilliant organizing and so you can see in the the picture uh one of the big mobilizations we did uh around taco bell which was uh where they did a, a pressure campaign on taco bell to get them to not buy the tomatoes from the growers until the growers treated them with respect and the night before our big demonstration taco bell agreed to every single one of our demands so we had to get rid of all our protest art we stayed up all night and painted cardboard yellow and just wrote Victoria Esperanza victory all over everything. And so that's what it looked like the next morning. You can see a little bit the, the iconic, the first time I went there, I was like, well, what, what should our signs be? There's no reason a sign should be a rectangle. So worth the farm workers, we made what became their iconic signs of a tomato bucket. You can see just a peek of that.
and uh, this is one of the rallies. Also very central to the organizing is music and especially San Jorocho. So I'm glad we'll get to have a little bit of music here and shout out to uh, my colleague Lou Aya, who's on the call. Uh, this is a picture from the Richmond Chevron refinery and just uh, following my journey, I've spent the last decade organizing in the climate justice movement a lot with my local heroes in the Bay Area, some of few of whom are on the phone. I think they have uh, some thousand grandmothers. But uh, we did a march and direct action at the Chevron refinery. And one of the things we took is uh, the Bay Area, what's sort of become a a Bay Area tradition of taking over streets and painting street murals on them. I think the, the first one that I'm familiar with in the U.S. was uh, around Occupy uh, in San Francisco with a coalition of labor community and Occupy groups. So we took it to Chevron uh, and painted a giant sunflower symbol of, uh, uh, of uh, both food resilience and also uh, it takes out toxins from, uh, which is what we're trying to do at Chevron, takes out toxins from the soil or remediates them. I've had, the last few years I've gotten to help uh, on visual art with the Poor People's Campaign, who are amazing because they, they center art probably more than any other uh, organization or campaign I've worked with. A couple of their, their leaders, Yara Allen and Sharon, uh, are singer, singers and songwriters and so, the first time I got to make art with them, I said, well, what are your messages? And they said, well, here's our songs. So all the, the signs we screen printed were the lyrics of their songs, which was incredibly powerful. And so much, so much better to have songwriters and poets doing our outward facing language than uh, our beloved and brilliant policy experts and, and organizational administrators. So just a, a few quick reflections on uh, what I call arts organizing. When I make art myself, I'm an arts activist, but I like to try and take it another step and actually invite other people to make art together. And so that, that's what I consider being an arts organizer. For the People's Climate March, when people were mobilizing to do different marches around the country, I sort of had conversations with local groups who were preparing for it about uh, how to prepare, like for a big march, what are you gonna look like? What are you gonna sound like? And how are you gonna move together? And so just that my reflection that at, at the end of the day, all we have to change the world is our voices, uh, our bodies and the things that we make together with our hands. And, and just being involved in both organizing arts and also in some different uh, religious traditions, I believe uh, that we're all very much uh, trying to shift consciousness with those three things, our, our, our voices, our bodies, and the things we make together with our hands. And so I, I think an organizer, in a sense, an artist, people who have ceremonies are also trying to shift consciousness by creating, by using those same elements. Last uh, summer, I got to meet Ricardo Levens Morales, and he did a beautiful image for a, a Green New Deal art kit. But and he wrote a little piece uh, about it. And I love this quote from him. So I'll just let people read. And I think that, that we are story driven. There's uh, a lot of propaganda and advertising is centered on how to manipulate us and organizers, hopefully in a, a more ethical way than the advertisers are also trying to figure out how do we win the battle of the story. And I believe that uh, whichever narrative do uh, dominates people's consciousness or, or embeds itself in our consciousness is, is uh, what, what can win the day or shift pe how people feel. And that the most powerful way to tell stories is through the arts. So that I, I actually come to arts partly as an organizer trying to figure out how do we win and be effective. Just gonna, uh, and one of the things as an organizer that drew me to it is it's an amazing way to involve people in social movements. There's definitely a role for uh, professional skilled artists, but I believe that art like music, like all culture is something that everyone can and should do. And the, a lot of the skills and especially the skills I'm excited about are things that anyone can do. 
This is a picture of uh, Montgomery Street when we had several hundred people taking over and repainting it. I won't read through this, but just uh, a lot of reasons why I, I believe that uh, effective movements need to put art at the center of organizing and why I think there's an opportunity to do that as we confront a, a possible coup. And I'm wondering if uh, Kim and Claire, are you on the call and can you unmute and tell us what we're looking at? Hi, Dave. Hi, Hi everyone. Uh, my name is Kim. Claire, are you also going to join in? Um, this is a mural we just did last week. Uh, supporting the Alameda Health System Coalition and the nurses strike. So this is in front of the Alameda County building on 12th and Oak. And um, yeah, it was a great honor to support uh, our frontline essential workers. And uh, it was definitely a collaborative effort getting messaging from the coalition, uh, working on the design, chalking, um, all the way to painting was very collaborative um, and a lot of fun. <laughs> and we learned skills on uh, making sure everyone was safe and secure as well. Claire, do you wanna add anything? Um, I'll just say it was such a powerful experience. I learned a lot um, from you, David. I learned from you, Kim, and your leadership. And um, the kids and I here helped paint. It was really wonderful to be out there painting with um, with workers who are on strike and to see them taking photos and to see um, folks dancing around. It was just so, so beautiful and powerful. David, I think you're muted. It looks like you're talking. Oh, sorry. Thank you, Kim and Claire, and shout out to Gabriella Oakland and the Healthcare Workers Unions, and uh, what a blessing to have their strike for better healthcare for all of us. Just gonna walk through a, a few more uh, images. Do we have, uh, Nancy, are you with us? Yes, I'm here, can you hear me okay? Yep, I'm just gonna go through a few more images and then pass it on to you. Heck. And this was uh, last Saturday with a cardboard and concrete collective, uh, a house an unhoused uh, art collective in Oakland working with Pro Arts. And this is in Oscar Grant Plaza. This is with uh, McDonald's workers who went on a six week strike at the Telegraph Oakland McDonald's and are actually gonna go out at 11 a.m. or noon this Friday, uh, a one day strike to try and win some of the the, the demands that they initially went out on. But just a, a wonderful way to, to take over space, have participation, uh, and make a strong visual statement. This is uh, black students at uh, Berkeley High School led a series of protests and they asked for some support painting a giant uh, Black Lives Matter mural in front of their school. And this is sort of a uh, been the, the recent wave of street murals is uh, since the, the mayor of DC sort of uh, a, as a big uh, gesture to the uh, president did a, a Black Lives Matter right in front of the White House that captured a lot of people and so people took that and then massively innovated and did similar ones all over the country. This is in Oakland also Oscar Grant. This one was just done uh, this weekend in uh, uh, Milwaukee, Wisconsin by Voses. And uh, uh, a lot of the Black Lives Matter murals have been uh, very gutsly using permanent paint so it would stick around. Uh, a lot of the ones I've done, we've used temporary paint. Partly it's non-toxic, uh, partly it's easier to, to negotiate uh, not getting pushed out of the space. And the yellow is uh, tempera, like kids' paints that you use in school. And the red on the right side is natural clay paint that we uh, actually make from clay powder. Just this is one very beautiful one in front of Wells Fargo World Headquarters with a couple of visiting First Nations artists, Isaac Murdoch and Christy Belcourt, who popularized the, the Thunderbird Woman around uh, many indigenous fights, including Standing Rock. And this is with our Ohlone relatives at the Shell Mounds. 
were doing periodic actions. And so they sort of came up with a series of images and then we divided them up and everybody worked on different images and created a, a mural at, at their shell mound. And then this was two years ago, the RISE mural that uh, I had the pleasure of working with Nancy on. And the prompt was we asked community groups and organizations, what's that one solution to climate, uh, climate change and injustice? And so 50 different groups painted their positive solutions uh, in Civic Center Plaza. And we took over the streets with uh, Society of Fearless Grandmothers, A Thousand Grandmothers, I Don't Know More, SFA, and held it all day long as people sketch out their murals and then invited people to paint them together. So I'm, I'm taking that as inspiration for maybe what we could do in the lead up to and uh, to prevent a coup. Just a couple more. And just speaking of that, you know, uh, our friends from Choose Democracy have created a, a cool meter and we're now at, at that stage. So it seems as, it, as they're planning about how to steal the election, we need to be planning about how to stop them. And just uh, I'll leave us with a Choose Democracy pledge and uh, just imagining and having good conversations with some of the folks at East Point about what if we what if we made tons of posters and we pasted the entire Bay Area so visually everybody would get in a state of preparation, maybe with this pledge, maybe with something else. And then what if we also prepared ourselves to paint all the streets with pro-democracy messages uh, when needed. So thank you for folks' attention. And uh, thank you so much, Nancy, for, for joining us and sharing. And uh, it's been a couple months, the first pandemic street mural I, I got to do out in front of Black Rock with Nancy. So please, uh, can you share your own slides or do you need someone to do that for you, Nancy? Um, I believe Pazu is going to do that, is that correct? Yay, thank you, Pazu. Um, hi everyone, it's really good to see all of your faces. Um, my name is Nancy Pili Hernandez. I'm calling in from San Francisco, California. And um, I want to show you guys a few different um, slides. I'm not just breaking it. Let me just go back. Really quick. Nancy, you're breaking up um, quite a bit. I'm wondering if it might be better for you to dial in. Um, okay, but well, if you would play that video for me, I can dial in. Okay, great. I didn't realize there was a video, so I'm actually going to reshare my screen with audio. So give me one second. Okay, thank you. So I just want to show this and shout out to the students from the Conscious Shoot Media who created this about um, the impacts of art and how we're using it. So this is a silk screen and the process of printing has to do with putting the screen onto this press. It's called an octopus because it has multiple arms. When I was little, I didn't see an artist as an option for a future. When you bring the screen down onto the table, you pull a squeegee full of ink across it and then the image comes out on the shirt or the poster. Uh, definitely not for a career. I think when I was little, I saw myself as being a regular worker and like, you know, a janitor or a cleaner or a male lady or I don't know, something like that. And then you just switch colors and then bring down the next color and then switch colors and then bring down the next color. My name is Nancy Hernandez and I try to create art that has a relevance in a movement for social justice. A lot of the things that I've worked on have been large-scale murals or mural projects that a lot of people from the community are a part of and also I like to silkscreen, make posters, uh, make t-shirts, make things that can visually show what people are thinking about. 
as my identity of, of my career and my in my role in the community, I've always been a teacher and an activist. So I got a job at June Jordan School for Social Equity, and I really wanted to teach ethnic studies, but there was no jobs teaching ethnic studies. So I took a job as an art teacher, and then I spent three years teaching art. And through that, I was really able to incorporate the ideas of popular education and the pedagogy that I learned through ethnic studies at SF State and use that in the classroom in a real setting. I got more exposure and experience with art, and then I was also working at Homies organizing the mission to empower youth for about 10 years. And while working there, I really got to see the impact that art can have on young people because I got to teach an after school uh, silk screening class. And the population of students that came to the after school class, a lot of them kind of dog each other and don't want to be in the same room at all, but they wanted to learn how to make their own t shirts. So we used that as a way to say, okay, you want to make a t shirt? Well, come to this program, do some um, political education, learn about your culture, your shared history, your ancestors. You want to be proud to be Lara. I said, okay, fine, you're proud, tight. Make a t-shirt that says how proud you are, not about hating on somebody else. Um, use this as a tool of empowerment for you to be able to make money and not follow in the footsteps of other people in your family who've gotten locked up. I like the kind of meditation and the repetitiveness of printing something over and over again. I like to create things that I can give away. I like to make bandanas that people will wear that have some message on it that unifies a whole bunch of different people that are all thinking a similar thought. In my lifetime, I think I've printed like over like 5,000 bandanas, so many different actions, and then we'll make 500 at a time so that everybody has people of color against war across their face, or people have um, you know young folks against the gang injunction, or whatever the message is that we've, that we've all decided on for that action. And then instead of just 400 people marching down the street together, it's like 400 people that all have the same slogan written across their face or across their arm or wherever they choose to wear their bandanas. So it's been really cool to be able to see them throughout the rest of my life like people have sewn them onto shirts or onto backpacks or you know they pop up over and over again and it's really cool to think you know I made that when I see somebody walking down the street wearing a t-shirt or wearing some piece of fabric that I silk screen. Right now we're on Broadway and 21st in downtown Oakland and we are in front of the water rights mural that uh, was painted here last summer and it took a month to paint it's about 5,000 square feet. We had over 200 volunteers help to paint it, and uh, it was a collaboration between a bunch of different artists and community members and um, local business owners that all contributed to make it possible. So at the end of the project, we should have 10 different murals in 10 different cities, different countries, and all places that people are working daily to improve the water conditions for future generations. So we've already finished one in Los Angeles, one in Oakland, one in Hawaii, one in the Philippines, and one in the Gaza Strip in Palestine. And a lot of the content and ideas have to do with different things people see going on about water. So the emergence of the water that begins on the top right corner is it's coming out of a pipe. And we painted it like that because a lot of the young people that we were working with have a relationship with water where water comes from a pipe. The main characters in the mural were painted by Estria and Vogue and they were up on top of this huge boom lift that had them like 30 feet up in the air. They painted images of two young people that actually are cultural workers here in the Bay Area and they're real people but we painted them like 40 feet tall so they're kind of larger than life. Uh, they're both acting as agents of change in the mural. We have them portrayed doing something, you know, portraying young people of color as kind of heroes in the environmental movement is a little different than the way that the environmentalist movement is sometimes portrayed. One of the things that I've learned through this mural project is that the majority of our body is water. And I think that that's also directly related to the planet. The majority of the planet is water. So I think there's like 75% of the Earth's surface that's covered in water. But I think a lot of people think, well, we don't really need to fight for water because there's so much of it. But in the reality, um, the majority of the water on the planet is salt water. So that means it's undrinkable for us. Less than 2% of the Earth's water is accessible. But then in this generation, in this past two generations, we've polluted over half of that. So that means that only 1% of all the water that exists on the planet that we can get to that's not held up in a glacier or that's not held up in the ocean, only 1% of that water is clean and drinkable water. One of the things that we're painting about in San Francisco and that we've painted about in Oakland have to do with uh, what we can do right now. And 
and what we can do in urban areas to change the way things are. So we're hoping that public art can be a way to call attention to the different concerns and conditions that are going on around water in different places. I really like that I get to live my life in a way that I can choose to um, make things better with my time. So th thank you, Kazu, for, for playing that. I think we'll, um, we'll stop that right there. And yeah. then um, if I could highlight my screen for a minute. Am I, am I sounding better now that I called in? OK, great. Yes, much better. Um, so if you could highlight my screen for a second, I just wanted to say that um, thank you guys for listening to that video and watching the images. I think that portrays way better than I could explain um, some of the art that we have created. And I would just like to add that um, in the beginning of that process of painting about water, we were given a, a, a grant by a spray paint company to use spray paint. And I already had been really involved in the graffiti community and used spray paint as my primary method. Um, and, and through this process, I really began to understand that like, if we are going to paint about the environment, we have to line up our uh, praxis with our theory. Uh, so one of the things that I learned along with meeting all these different communities who have really important issues going on around their dams or their uh, water rights or their pollution or tons of different um, things that are going on around the world uh, around access to water was really that um, we we need to find ways that we engage people in participating and creating art to envision the future and we need to do it in a non-toxic way. So I guess the update I would just like to contribute is that since being a part of some of these projects that you saw David talk about, I have really uh, loved being a part of all of the projects where we use clay. Because really, when, in the pictures that you saw, maybe um, um, if you could show the slideshow that I have as well, I have some of those. Um, and if you would just skip forward to the Montgomery Street one really quickly. Um, that one, you know, we were using the earth to paint about the earth and we were painting on concrete, which is the public, which is the commons, right? Yeah, could you play that video really quickly? Um, this video is a great example of how uh, the thousand grandmothers called people together to um, the um, downtown Montgomery Street area of San Francisco, which houses a lot of huge banks. And um, we blocked the streets from 7 a.m. till 4 p.m. on the Wall Street of the West and use that common space, which is normally taken up by traffic, to paint about the environment using So maybe if we could just show that one really quickly. Um, I love this video because the drone really zooms out and shows you the scale and the scope of this project. So each of all of this paint is non-toxic. By, uh, by the next night, they had hired uh, DPH had come in with water pressure um, trucks and just washed it down the, the street, you know, down the street drains. And it wasn't like we were adding acrylic or oil paint into the water because uh, the majority of the paint that you see in this image is actually uh, clay from the Sierras in three different colors, along with some tempera. So I, I just really feel like this tactic has been an evolution of the process of us learning how to work together, learning how to paint together, learning how to portray out into the world the agreements that we have and what we would like to see in the world. Um, but this is an evolution of it because it blocked traffic and also it lined up with uh, direct actions that were taking place on the banks. So there were shout out to the grandmas who's, who locked themselves to the doors of five major banks that are funding the pollution and funding the pipelines because I feel like that example of direct action is really uh, lining up our theory with our praxis. So thank you for showing that. Um, so I, I don't want to take up too much more time, but I guess I just want to show really quickly maybe the resist banner or maybe the uh, Portland Bridge action, just whichever one you guys are more interested in. Anybody care about either one of those actions, um, more or less? OK, well, let's go to Portland. OK, great, yes. Um, so Portland is uh, an action that I was a part of through Greenpeace. Uh, we had seven different activists uh, rappel down from the St. John's Bridge to block a Shell um, oil tanker. The ex permit had been given by the Obama administration to the Shell Corporation to drill in the Arctic, and so they had a fleet of over 15 boats that were parked and waiting in the Arctic uh, trying to explore for oil. They had been given a permit to drill for exploratory uh, purposes. Uh, the front boat, uh, the Fenica, was the 
icebreaker ship. And that ship was the first one in the fleet that would push forward and break the ice and it got a, got a hole in it. So when that happened, activists in the community saw that as an opportunity because they knew it would take at least a week to get the ship down to Portland to be fixed and then maybe a week to fix it and then temper it to get back. So during that time, we mobilized a team of activists who all, uh, we sewed a bunch of banners and then uh, rappelled off of the bridge at four in the morning and uh, used our bodies to dangle from the rope to block the ship. Uh, we were up there for 40 hours. Most of us uh, left without being arrested. And um, I would just say that it was a turning point definitely in the Fenica campaign and the, and the Shell campaign because um, it delayed the ship from getting to its destination long enough that by the time they got there, their permit ran out. And because of this action, be getting an international eyes on it, um, this action actually had more views than any other protest has had at that time in the history of humanity, because we had Periscope and Twitter and Instagram all starting. And uh, yeah, I agree that the flowing banners really made people kind of look like superheroes, you know? So it, it really was no branding, no messaging, no writing on those on those flags. Just we just sewed them on and then had each person put them up for visibility so the boats could see where they were even at nighttime. But the way that the community interpreted that was that we were actually the superheroes in this scenario. And that's, I think, what David was saying about uh, the battle of the story. Right. So uh, the it is agreed upon after the WTO that the community is the is a superpower as well. Uh, that the, the people are the, the second world power. And if the public opinion of this action is that we should be taken down, then we would have been taken down immediately. But because the public opinion of this action was that we were the righteous ones and Shell is actually the culprit, um, none of us were, I was not arrested. Most of us got away without being arrested after being up there for 40 hours and costing an amazing amount of um, uh you know, impact, amazing amount of cost, you know, cost a lot. We didn't know exactly when the permit was going to run out, but the the plan was to try to delay them as long as possible in as many ways possible. So there were multiple actions where kayaktivists blocked different boats from being able to get to the Arctic from um, Seattle and from Portland. And so it was a um, cohesive effort of many different forces to get it to the point where it would delay them uh, to the end of summer because uh, as the ice freezes, it gets harder for them to get to the places where they ex intended to drill. So everybody's um, agreement was to delay them as much as possible. And then once they finally got out there, then the ice started to freeze again. And, you know, so the earth was on our side. Eh? <laughs> and um, so their their permits ran out and they were not uh, reissued because of the international support that came for this action. Um, so I feel like that's probably all the time that I have. Um, so I guess I could uh, move on to the next thing if you guys want. Um, what do you guys think, David? Should I do another one, or do you guys want to start working on art? Do, do another one. Okay, well, if you guys want to look at the resist banner, I can show you that one really quickly, if you could move to that one. Um, so that's backwards one. Yeah, this was this was an action in, in uh, collaboration with Greenpeace, yes. Uh, so the, the next one I'll, that I'll show is the resist banner, which is also a project that I did with Greenpeace. I was one of the climbers that uh, carried a 75 foot by 35 foot banner that we hand painted up to the top of a crane over the White House um, on the third day of number 45 rain. So right after the inauguration and the huge march that happened in protest of the inauguration, um, we dropped this banner um, at five, four in the morning um, and uh, climbed up a 375 foot crane to um, put a huge unwelcome mat to him on his entry into the White House. Anybody see that? Did you guys see that? Yes, it was hand painted. We painted that. Um, yeah. Yay, yes, I was there for the Giants all day, every day. <laughs> okay, great. I'm glad you saw that because that was, uh, at the time, this then replaced the Fenica action in Portland as the most viewed protest on the history of the planet. So we had the most eyes on it. It was national and international news, and it really did, um, I would say, get people to lift their heads up because they had to look up to look at it. But also um, it was a attempt to rally the troops who were feeling really down after um, 
you know, what we saw as a major loss and, and hopefully, you know, flying a flag to say don't give up and, um, and that we can't just allow him to get away with all the different policies that he has tried to pass. So I do think that that has become part of the symbol and part of the messaging around how we react to this coup. And I, I feel like I hope that goes forward and that people understand that we don't have to just um, accept whatever the outcomes of the election are. Um, so maybe I'll take like, you know, a minute of questions if you guys want. Anybody interested in, in uh, questions? <laughs> yeah, I, I agree with whoever in the comments, uh, with uh, Amy in the comments that says that the most impactful thing we can have is like the moral compass that we are providing. So yeah, I do feel like that's how, that is part of how we become the world second, the super, second world superpower is by, um, you know, being a moral compass for our, for our policy and our uh, corporations. And um, so I would give you one suggestion is a class I've taught um, since the pandemic has begun has been to teach a lot of young people how to do the circles on the ground in whatever space they can using their own um, chalk paint. Um, and so this is a three ingredient paint. Write it down. Cornstarch. Cornstarch, which is a plant-based um, powder. Uh, it's a food product. You can get it at the store. It's very affordable. It's like $2 for a pound. So cornstarch, equal parts water, right? Everybody can hopefully get access to that right where we're at. So cornstarch and water make ch sidewalk chalk. Uh, we had the students put those into cupcake tins, uh, you know, like put like a little half cup into each cupcake tin and then add food coloring. And so by them being able to mix their own food coloring, they were able to add pigment. Um, and then we had them brush that onto the sidewalk or their stairs or their backyard or wherever they could get access to paint on the street. And we had them paint images and messages to the earth. So I, I would say that if you're looking for a really quick thing that everybody can get from their corner store and be able to join a meeting and have the supplies ready and do it from home, what I felt was the most successful thing of that other than getting them to like you know, get off the screen and actually create was that we could see each other working through the Zoom call. We could see each other's art and we could hear each other's messages. We were all listening to the same music. We had a DJ that was um, creating music as we painted together. Um, but that uh, at the end of it, we really felt like everybody had uh, said a message out loud to the earth and put it in a public space where folks who were walking around could see it. Um, and so a lot of them incorporated whatever they were thinking about. You know, there was Black Lives Matter and there was uh, wear a mask and protect each other and all these positive messages um, um, that were, you know, created by seven to 14 year olds on the street. And I really like the idea of us painting in the streets because I feel like those are the comments. You know, it's public space and any time that we can take over public space and infuse our messages and infuse our culture and infuse our art, uh, I really feel like that is part of what we need to be doing as artists of disrupting the status quo and also um, rallying people. Because if we can get folks to be in agreement to paint something, we get an image or a message or a purpose in multiple people's mind. That's how we make change. It's just like prayer. It's like collective agreement, you know. Um, so I would say the pros and cons of using the cornstarch versus the clay base is just access. You know, if, if I'm working with, you know, families here in this neighborhood, um, it's easier for them to get to a corner store and buy cornstarch than it is for me to get to all of their houses and distribute clay or for them to get to a store where they could buy clay. So, um, but per personally, the clay lasts really well and, and stays on really well. And I, I love the clay because how better to fight for the earth and to use the earth, right? I mean, you know, right? So that's why I love that one. Um, yeah, cool. I'll, I'll give it back to David then if that's, uh, if anything, if anybody wants to get involved in making things in Oakland or anywhere that they are, I definitely feel like, you know, you have full reign to just do this. I mean, it's your it's your streets, it's your commons. And right now is a perfect opportunity because there's lots of places where people are shifting our idea that the streets should be for the cars and changing them to, oh, well, they should be parklets or there should be, you know, walking places. And there's tons of land that has been allocated in every city around the convenience of the individual vehicle. And um, that is public land and it does belong to the people. And so if we want to re reconfigure how our society is going to function and incorporate more place for art, more place for gardens, more place for green space, we have to take back some of the streets. 
Um, so Thank the recipe so for the clay for is uh, clay powder and water. Yeah, and then you can um, get different colored clay. So David has got white clay, red clay, and brown clay, and then made those three colors. Um, yeah. And you can also use, uh, if you have friends with access to soil, especially clay soil, you can use the color. I have a lot of friends who also do mud stencils and use stencils and basically paint mud or watered down soil as paint. And, yeah, I love uh, that. And just to Pam, we are actually going to uh, shift over a little bit and do some art making and songs. And any uh, quick thoughts? And I'm going to ask you a little bit about uh, what you what you think about when you make images, Nancy. But any any last things before we jump there? Okay. Uh, and as Kaz mentioned, he's going to uh, each point is going to. Uh, take some lead in initiating some art actions to help stop a coup. Very excited about painting all the streets that we need to and doing that. And what we're going to do now is uh, transition to uh, making physical art and also uh, hearing music. And we're very blessed to have uh, Joyce and Jesse from Thrive with us. I'll get people set up and then I'll pass the mic over to them to share some songs and maybe share a little reflection on the musical arts. And um, when the pandemic happened, I had been part of uh, planning an action with Idle, Idle No More SF Bay to stop tankers from moving uh, or stop the Army Corps of Engineers from dredging the bay to allow bigger tankers of tar sands oil to, to dump it off at the five Bay Area refineries. And we, they had a beautiful action plan. We we're gonna do lots of art, but then the pandemic happened. We all had to stay home. So one innovation that we came up with, since we couldn't do an art, we had to cancel our art build is we did a virtual art build and we had one person make each letter. And so, and we started off just cause it was, if you remember, I guess, March, April, when people weren't leaving their homes a lot. And so we just said, uh, use stuff around your house. So I'm just, I'm gonna do a quick show and tell, and then I'll give a few prompts and get people, so start getting your art supplies out if you have uh, paint, uh, charcoal, pencils, markers, pastels, chalk, crayons, collage, paper cuts, anything. But uh, this one was made by my partner, Julie, just with uh, stuff from the recycling container. So it's just packaging and a piece of cardboard. Uh, and her daughter, Gemma, made this one just using two pieces of scrap, scrap paper taped together, so poster size, and just a pencil. Uh, Kyla did this one using whoop, uh, just colored pencils. This one was uh, painted paper and then cut and pasted on. This was uh, a paper cut of black paper on a white background. So those are all different ways and I'll just, I've, so people have been going from that to then do innovating to doing art builds Poor People's Campaign, uh, Fossil Free California, others where people will make art together. So we're asking tonight if people would consider making a poster. And my prompt would be to think about the, the threat of a, a coup, a power grab, a stealing of the, the elections. And what's the sign you might want to put in your window, hold on the street, post up or wheat paste in your neighborhood. Um, so think about that and I'll just share a few tips before we shift into music and see if there's any questions. So I've, I've got my paper, I've found two pieces of paper, taped them together, I've got my poster size paper. Um, and let's see, where did we go? Got too many papers, here we go. And I'll just share a few things that I think about when making making images and uh, as a visual learner, I think a lot of the world understands the world through visuals and images and, and music getting there. But uh, I think about what do I wanna communicate? What's the story I want to tell? I think about if it's gonna be in my window or I'm gonna carry it in the street or I'm gonna put it up, how, will people be able to see it and read it? So I often think is like, is there contrast? Is there light dark? Is it bold enough? Also think about different ways of uh, 
what's an unpredictable way to say uh, a story or message that uh, you know maybe uses a song lyric or an image that somehow you or other people in your community might identify with that, to connect with it. And then also the most powerful thing we have is our story. So if there's any way you can weave in your personal story or remember during Occupy Wall Street, people just had a, a piece of cardboard and they wrote, you know, this is my situation. And usually on a marker and cardboard, I'm the 99%. So that personal story is so powerful. And I, I sometimes will do a quick sketch and then go for it. Nancy, any, what, when you're about to make a, an image, maybe not so ambitious as a mural with a lot of community process, what are your thoughts? Well, I, um, I've been trained by Presida Eyes, so I feel like I definitely have Susan Cervantes on one shoulder, always in my ear, and then I have like my graffiti writer homies who also taught me art in this year, and these guys are always trying to get me to get up as high as possible and get my image out there as high as possible and say, fuck the police, and she's always in my ear telling me, not only do you want to paint the problem, but you need to paint the solution. And so I think her framework in all of her murals and all of her students' murals has been that, yes, we are as artists, we do need to portray the things that are going on, but we cannot focus only on um, the negative or on what we are against. We need to use our art as a way to be proactive and portray what it is that we want. She feels like art is a spiritual warfare and she says that if you paint it, it will happen. And so we need to be careful when we are replicating their systems with our art. If we are against dredging, but we draw the bay being dredged. If we are against the coup, but we paint a coup. Um, she feels like we are aiding, um, you know, what we are against but with our art if we if we uh, give them all of our power so her influence on me has definitely been to always teach me to say what it is that I want not only what it is that I'm against so asking folks get your paper your supplies uh, and have your computer set somewhere so you don't spill paint on it and we've got uh, 35 minutes together so I'm going to see if people th maybe think about doing something simple enough that you can actually show and tell. We're gonna do quick show and tells at the end and maybe ask people to take a quick picture and send it in. But uh, think about some, uh, what Nancy and I just prompted, uh, something simple, maybe doable in a, a half hour or at least the first part. And uh, are there any questions? Art is about casting spells, love that. Well, I'm so excited that uh, Joyous and Jesse from Thrive Choir could join us. If Thrive Choir is a community of musicians, and if you've been in the streets, you've often heard them leading songs and writing songs, and they've also just released some, some of their first music publicly. So uh, Jesse and Joyous, would you uh, introduce yourselves, share any reflections on the musical forms of arts, and then uh, we'd love it if you'd share some songs. And I'm also, we have a, a prompt from Deborah. Any ideas for folks who have phrases? And I'm gonna invite people to use the chat to, to maybe say, if you can just type in quickly what you're working on, what words or images, or if you have words or images that you're drawn to that uh, you could uh, share with other folks. So, uh, Joyce and Jesse. All right, thank you, David. Um, my name is Jesse. I am a member of the Thrive Choir. Very happy to be here. Uh, it's an honor to get to be here with um, with all of you, and to to serve this um, group spell casting around the world we want to see and bringing more beauty into the world and being together in a time when it's hard to be together. And I think I'm gonna hang out a little bit first, and then. Um, Joyous and I will pass it back and forth. So while folks are sharing uh, phrases and getting their materials out, I'll just speak for a moment, but I'll mostly sing and invite everyone to sing with me. Um, I run an outdoor education and wilderness guiding and mentoring uh, project. And I work with mostly um, young men, teenage boys and up into their early 20s. And um, I 
one of the core pieces of the culture building that we do, whether it's in someone's backyard or in Tilden Park or on Mount Tamalpais or in the Sierras is we sing. Uh, when it's safe, we sing around a fire. And when it's not safe, we sing around a headlamp or um, just in a circle. And I have found that it's um, very powerful, especially uh, at night under the stars on a, on a beautiful mountain or in a beautiful place to sing, especially with young male socialized humans. It's very powerful. And the things that I think it does um, are it unifies people, brings us together. Um, I've been in situations where I'm with youngsters who I've been singing with for two, three, four years, and it's like we become a little choir out in the middle of the wilderness, spontaneously harmonizing and finding new parts and echoing each other. And um, so that kind of unification that singing has done for uh, humans forever is really powerful. And another thing I think it does is um, helps us to move, helps us to move our emotions, uh, helps to move us through ceremony or through the streets in a procession or a march. Um, so music and the voice, yeah, is very powerful to help propel and to move. And um, I'm gonna start by sharing a kind of funky upbeat song. I'm sorry that I don't exactly know who to credit with this song. Um, we've tried to find the, the writer to give credit and praise and I, I don't know at this moment. Um, we've performed this song and I have sung this song with dozens and dozens of young people in the wilderness. Uh, we call it Put Your Roots Down. And I am going to paste the words in the chat and invite you to sing along with me if you wish. So there it is, put your roots down. Let's go. Put your roots down, put your feet on the ground. You can hear what she says if you listen. Put your roots down, put your feet on the ground. You can hear what she says if you listen. Cause the sound of the river as it moves across the stones is the same sound as the blood in your body as it moves across your bones. Are you listening? Said, are you listening? Let's go. Put your roots down, put your feet on the ground. You can hear what she says if you listen. Uh, put your roots down, put your feet on the ground. You can hear what she says if you listen. Cause the sound of the river as it moves across the stones is the same sound as the blood in your body as it moves across your bones. Oh, are you listening? Said, are you listening? Well, put your roots down, put your feet on the ground. You can hear what she says if you listen. Uh, put your roots down, put your feet on the ground. You can hear what she says if you listen. Cause the sound of the river as it moves across the stones is the same sound as the blood in your body as it moves across your bones. Oh, are you listening? Said, are you listening? One more time. Put your roots down, put your feet on the ground. You can hear what she says if you listen. Put your roots down, put your feet on the ground. You can hear what she says if you listen. Cause the sound of the river as it moves across the stones is the same sound as the blood in your body as it moves across your bones. Are you listening? Are you listening? Said, are you listening? Said, are you listening? Or oh, are you listening? Are you listening? Said, are you listening? Thank y'all. Thank you for making beauty. Thank you for your activism. Thank you for your time and your attention. 
and I'm gonna, in a light way, pass it over to Joyous, and they'll hop in when they feel like it, and then I'll be back later. Thanks, Jesse. Hi, I'm Joyous Dawn. Again, also super grateful to be here repping the Thrive Choir. And although we are not singing together in the way we used to, we are singing together now in this new way. So grateful to share the space. And I am going to start by singing a song and then I definitely have some reflections I wanna share. I'm gonna put these words in the chat again and you are welcome to join, although I know it's probably hard to look at words and also draw, but join as you, as you feel like it. This song is by Kyle Limley, who is a member of our choir and um, just has written really prophetic music. So it goes like this. We rise before the seas. We rise as tall as trees. We rise not just for you and me, but for all humanity. Let's try that together. We rise before the seas. We rise as tall as trees. We rise not just for you and me, but for all humanity. The second part goes like this. We rise, rise for liberation. We rise, rise for all creation. We rise, rise for liberation. We rise, rise for all creation. We rise, rise for liberation. We rise, rise for all creation. We rise, rise for liberation. We rise, rise for all creation. So putting them together, it goes like this. Six, seven, eight. We rise before the seas. We rise as tall as trees. We rise not just for you and me, but for all humanity. We rise, rise for liberation. We rise, rise for all creation. We rise, rise for liberation. We rise, rise for all creation. And again, we rise before the seas. We rise as tall as trees. We rise not just for you and me, but for all humanity. We rise, rise for liberation. We rise, rise for all creation. We rise, rise for liberation. We rise, rise for all creation. Again, we rise, we rise, we rise not just for you and me, but for all humanity. We rise before seas, we rise as tall as trees, we rise not just for you and me, but for all humanity. We rise, rise for liberation. We rise, rise for all creation. We rise, rise for liberation. We rise, rise for all creation. Nice. I know you sounded great. <laughs> so I wanted to share about that song a little bit. Um, uh, Nancy and David both spoke to the rise for climate jobs and justice that happened a couple years ago. And this song was one that Kyle wrote specifically for that. And he was one of the people coordinating a flash mob street choir convergence of tens of thousands of singers to sing these words um, and many more songs, you know, marching through the streets of San Francisco and I was there, Jesse was there, I probably many of you were there too. And just like the power of thousands of people singing through the streets was incredible. It was like something I had not experienced in that way before. And so just, I'm just remembering that moment. And um, I feel like there's some, there's a lot of times where I'm like, how can I, as a singer, as someone who cares about healing through song, 
participate in, in a meaningful way to me um, in actions and in social change. And I feel like that was a moment where I really saw that power of the unified voice. And although things are different now, <laughs> you know, maybe we can't all go out in the streets or maybe we can in some ways just take some coordination. Maybe you have like everyone wearing is wearing masks. Um, actually, it does remind me of an action that did happen uh, recently where everyone was wearing masks to sing out in the streets with the, the Thrive, Street, Thrive Street Choir. Um, so it is possible, just takes coordinating. And I think for me, it's like a, such an important way to, to share. And I'm curious if other folks have been involved in kind of like singing in the streets or in the Thrive Street Choir, if, you've, if you don't know about them. So like me and Jesse are in the Thrive Choir, which is kind of a small group of folks who sing, perform at events and gatherings. And the Thrive Street, Thrive Street Choir is a group of um, basically hundreds of volunteers who have signed up to be notified when there is um, a need for singers at direct actions. And there are trainings for song leaders uh, to, to learn how to lead those songs. And so if you want to plug into that, um, definitely connect with Thrive Street Choir on Facebook, or um, they just have a new Instagram as well, just to plug that. And I will and I think we wanted to maybe have a break for some showing, showing and telling of art. Do you still want to do that, David? Sure. Thank you so much. If everyone wants to give a little virtual applause to Joyce and Jesse. And uh, yeah, that's got my mind spinning. Is like, how are we going to get ten, tens of thousands of people to sing in the streets virtually? What are the songs? How are we going to learn them all? Because as we were painting those, uh, five city blocks in Civic Center Plaza, the, the choirs were leading people. And so some of those songs, there were actually thousands of people singing in a coordinated way. It was pretty magic. So that's, as a visual artist, I'm always like, how can we get the two in sync? Or how can we, maybe we need to paint the song lyrics two blocks long and everyone can read them. But uh, show and tell time. Is there anyone who, who uh, can give us a quick view of what they're working on, hold it up in front of us and say a few words about it. I see Ruthie raising her your hand, so I can put you as. And I got the words off, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Good, I got the words off your show and the chat, and, um, and I asked for help, but I got it without anybody actually giving me an exact answer. So I wanted three words that were all like da 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 da, and so I picked that out: resist, disrupt, persist. And I'm doing it like this. I don't know if you can see. I just sketched it out. We can see. Can you see it? So oh. now I'm gonna go in with black paint and just paint them. Nice. Thank you. I want other people to make them too, so, or I'll make more, I'll make a lot. <laughs> Anybody else? I'll just hold up. I've been trying to work on a paper cut here. Nice. Let's see. Woo! And this is... Wow. Wow. This is, um, I'm Therese LaHaye in, uh, from the Emeryville Artist Co-op. And uh, does anyone know who did the, the incredible uh, murals at the Albany Ball? Of so many lives that have been lost. So my idea was to take the lineage tree of compassionate beings, the, the lineage of, you know, bodhisattvas, compassionate beings, and to uh, feel those, make them into jewels, make the people, so many people have lost their lives 
into jewels as part of the lineage tree. So this is a sketch. Um, I've been I've been making lineage trees. There's a painted one. And uh, I just had I had this idea to make the lineage holders uh, all of the beautiful people that uh, have lost their lives and that they're that they are jewels like leaves in the trees. And um, if anyone knows who did the, the murals out at the Albany Bulb, I would love to collaborate with them. So that was my initial concept hearing about this event. And, and I'm interested in collaborating. Thank you. You can, thank you, Therese. You can also uh, send her a note directly in the chat. Nell says that maybe it's Ori Original who, who's been doing uh, portraits of folks killed by police and just shouting out Kar Karak, who says the idea of people all over the country emerging from homes and singing in unison is so am amazing to imagine in the chat. Other folks, if you've been working on something, just uh, hold it up, turn your mute off and say a couple words so we can see how folks are doing. So Dante here would like to share. What do you want to say, Dante, about your artwork? Mine says Black Lives Matter. It is breaking news. Breaking news on the bottom. As a fish. I yeah. used my stencil. <laughs> and then, so Dante's nine miles to seven created this hand. And his name is here on this finger. And then here it says second grade, because he's in second grade. Um, 2020, October, the movie Onward, and here it says Freedom, and this is Miles with his brother, and on the bottom it says Black Lives Matter. Cool. Thank you both. I think we just had the bar raised a little. Mm -hmm. That's so beautiful. Thank you. Anyone else? There, if we don't have uh, have one yet, we'll uh, plan, plan by in the next 15 minutes to give us a quick glimpse of what you're working on. In about 10 minutes, Kaz is going to tell us how we can plug into arts organizing in the Bay. And uh, would folks love to hear another song from Jesse or Joyous? Yeah. Cool. Thank you. Um, so I'll share one that I sing with my kids and um, my my um, platonic life partner, best friend, who I run the program with. Um, he's a songwriter and a poet, and he he wrote this one. And um, it includes a nigun. And nigunim are ancient wordless Jewish melodies. Some of them are very, very old and have survived uh, many hundreds of years of diaspora. And um, they have just syllables like yaidadai, lai la lai, nai na nai, things like that. So half of it is a nigun and the other half is in English. And I will. Um, paste the words in the chat in case you feel like singing with me. I won't paste all the yai yai yais because you'll just, you'll get that. And um, his name is Eli Marienthal, the person who channeled this song. And it's a bit of a different vibe. This is one that um, had a powerful experience this summer singing this with a group of guys at the top of Buena Vista Crest in the southern part of Yosemite National Park as the sun was setting. And it was the day before they were gonna sit out for 36 hours by themselves to uh, ground and form some intentions for their lives. 
And uh, it was the moment where things really shifted. And um, this song is a little more somber and has, I've seen it help people move feelings of grief and um, other deep feelings. So please join me if you feel called. Yai da 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 Open the ocean wide in us, open the ocean wide. Take all the pain inside of us, take all the pain inside. Open the ocean wide in us, open the ocean wide. Take all the pain inside of us, oh, take all the pain inside. Yai da 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 Yai da 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 Open the ocean wide in us. Open the ocean wide. Take all the pain inside of us. Take all the pain inside. Open the ocean wide in us. Oh, open the ocean wide. Take all the pain inside of us. Oh, take all the pain inside. Yai da 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 da. Yai da 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 Yai da 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 Yai da 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 Yai da 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 Yai da 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 Yai da 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 Yai da 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 And I'm going to stop there and pass it to Joyce in case they want to share one more song. Thank you, Jesse. That was beautiful. Do we have time for one more song? Awesome. In a similar vein, I'm going to share a song that I wrote um, for healing. And it is about the words are, I'm putting it in the chat, I am healing, I am healing my body knows what to do um, because it's, uh, I don't know, it's my body that is involved when I go to an action to sing. It's our bodies that are here in these little screens. Uh, and so this song is to connect us with our bodies too as we are doing this work. You're welcome to sing along with these words as well. And also I just wanna throw out there, um, I am very interested in collaborating with visual artist. That's not a talent that I have, but very open. So feel free to reach out. Okay. I am healing. I am healing. My body No what to do there may be times when it's hard 
There may be times when I need help and I know all I need is in front of me. I am healing. I am healing. I am healing. My body knows what to do. I'm so by love and I know friends are never far when I need it I know I'm healing I know what to do oh, yeah. I am healing feel it in your body I am healing, my body knows what to do, I'm surrounded by Last words are we are healing we are healing we are healing our bodies our bodies know what to do love. Thank you so much, Joyous. So I'm going to say a couple thank yous, pass it over to Kazu, but I'm, I'd like to take a picture of everybody holding up their art. So I'm going to model if everyone, and so you can see everybody's if you go to the top and go from speaker view to, uh, what is it, uh, gallery view, click on gallery view so you can see everybody. Everybody hold up their art and I'm going to ask you to keep it up there for about a minute or two until I get, I'll put in the, until I get a, a screenshot of everyone, which we'll share out. And so grateful for uh, Joyous and Jesse from Thrive. So fun to uh, rock on screen with Nancy and uh, super appreciative for East Point for hosting us all. And so Kazu, do you want to, talk about how we're gonna stop a coup and liberate ourselves in the streets with art. <laughs> yeah, no pressure, huh? Thank you for that. Um, and thank you, David. Thank you, Nancy. Thank you, Joyous. Thank you, Jesse, for all that you've contributed. Um, so this workshop was an incredible workshop that I think could um, benefit all of us at any point in human history. And we're not at just any point in human history. We're very particular point in, in, in history. And so this was a workshop that's trying to prepare us to begin to come together around the November election. So I just want to share my screen one more time. Uh, David, are you ready for me to share my screen or? Yep, I got screenshots of everybody. You can put Great, your art down. You. And so beautiful to see the, the windows full of handmade art. So uh, I just wanted to share a little bit about some of what we are organizing at East Point. Um, and many of you may know some of this already, but uh, so between now and October 24th is a season that we are calling Preparing Together. And we have a ton of trainings coming up. 
Um, in addition to this training, we're doing an emotional regulation and somatics training for, for the front lines on Friday. Uh, we have a direct action training coming up. Uh, we have a, uh, I, I don't even remember, we have like four or five trainings coming up. Um, as well as uh, every twice a week, we are doing these trainings called Preparing Together. Um, that kind of provides the, the large framework through which we're organizing and some more details of some of the plans. And then from October 25th to November 3rd, we're going to be organizing what we're calling Deepening Together, where every single day from 4 to 6 p.m., we're going to be gathering outside of the Oakland City Hall. Um, and each day we're going to have a different theme. So we'll have a day of grief and a day of anger and a day of remembrance and a day of joy. Um, and we're going to be using this as an opportunity to begin to come together and to, be, to begin to build relationships with each other so that it'll be easier for us to adjust and, and respond to whatever happens on the morning of November 4th. And on, within those 10 days, one of those days may be a large mural painting project. Um, uh, in Oakland. So please make sure that you're on our mailing list. If you register for this workshop, you are on our mailing list and you'll continue to hear updates about that. And then uh, after November 3rd or November 4th is going to be the season of taking action together where we'll be, um, depending on what happens, particularly after the election, we'll be taking action together. And again, you'll continue to get updates about that. Um, we're also partnering with uh, an, this organization that David mentioned, Choose Democracy, that is going through this kind of four-step process of making sure that everyone votes um, and refusing to accept the results of the election until every vote is counted and putting pressure on our elected politicians to say publicly that they will also do the same. And then if the current administration tries to steal the election results at all, that we will take to the streets and if needed to completely shut down the country until um, democracy is, is, is kind of, um, is, is won. And as far as the taking actions, a lot of it, like we don't know exactly what we're gonna be responding to. So a lot of the planning is emerging as things move along. But one of the things that we have talked about a lot with David and with other activists and artists is the possibility that if a coup is announced that we do a similar action probably in San Francisco where we blockade several intersections um, to create space for a bunch of artists to come to come together and to paint a big mural with the words democracy onto the street. Um, and so this is a, 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 a type of action that has happened throughout the country already as David had mentioned. And in order for that kind of action to really take shape, we need people to be in teams or affinity groups um, because teams, people being in teams will allow us to mobilize and organize a lot quicker. Um, and each team can be empowered to, to take on certain pieces of the work. And so we're encouraging everyone to consider joining a team of two, three, four, eight people, um, friends that you trust to begin to, to think about uh, how you might be able to act together. Um, and there's two resources that I want, uh, Astrid will put into the chat for us. Um, there's a resource at eastpointpeace.org backslash teams. Um, and that is a handout that just shows a few things that you can start to, to do in your teams to prepare yourself to get into actions. And then once you are in a team, um, even if it's like a very informal team, even if the team is only going to last for the next month, um, we want you to fill out a survey, which is available at eastpointpeace.org backslash November teams. And you'll also receive these uh, links in a follow-up email that you'll get by the end of the night. Um, and we want everyone who's in a team to fill out the survey so that we know who you are and we know how we can connect you so that we can coordinate all of our actions. And you will be hearing from us. Again, a lot of this is coming together as we speak. So we don't have the details for a lot of it, but we, you will be getting updates um, from us. So you'll be getting the general updates if you're just on our mailing list, um, but we really need everyone to consider start getting, to start, um, getting yourself into teams. And once you do, if you can fill out that survey, um, we will be able to update you even more. So I think that's that. And again, you'll receive these links in your email. Um, and the one last thing is that if you'd like to donate uh, for this workshop, uh, there will be a link that, um, Astrid, if you can drop that into the chat as well. And again, you'll um, receive this email. We're trying to make sure that all of the people who are um, giving their time to put these workshops on can receive some stipends and you know, all of the organizing work uh, will also need supplies and support as well. 
So I think those are all of the announcements. Um, again, I, I cannot emphasize this enough. We really need people to start joining teams and affinity groups. Um, and I think that will help support us a lot as we plan these actions. And we definitely um, really look forward to kind of continuing to be in relationships with you through these virtual trainings. And then the 10 days of gatherings heading into the elections, we hope will be opportunities for you all to connect with more people and to meet people if you're not on a team already or if you don't know who to be on a team with, hopefully those will be opportunities. And we may be um, creating more opportunities for people to come together just to meet new folks to, to figure out how you can join a team as well. So again, you'll continue to get updates on that, but I think that's all of the announcements that I wanna make. Um, so just as we wrap up, I wanna invite everyone to share your uh, art once again on the screen and to unmute yourself. This is gonna be a little chaotic with everyone, but everyone to unmute yourself and just to offer your thanks to David, to Nancy, to Jesse and Joyous for all of your talent that you've shared with us today. So I wanna invite everyone to unmute yourself and we'll all say thank you and goodbye and we will close with that. So thank you all for joining us today. Thank you to East Point. Thank you. Thank you all so much. Thank you. You'll all be receiving an email from us tonight. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you everybody. Thank you so much. Thanks, David.